Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. This webinar is an introduction to accessing and using the European Social Survey data. So a quick introduction. My name is Simon Parker. I work in the uh, training and user support team at the UK Data Service, based at the University of Essex. And I'm joined here by Alan Humphrey, who's the head of household surveys in the so Survey Research Centre at NatSEN Social Research. I'm going to hand over to Alan, and he's going to be taking you through an introduction to the European Social Survey. Okay, okay. hello everyone. Uh, as Simon said, uh, my name is Alan Humphrey. I am Head of uh, Household Surveys at NatSEN Social Research, um, and I'm also the National Coordinator for the European Social Survey in the United K Kingdom. Each country has a National Coordinator, uh, so I look after the UK. Um, what I'm going to be talking through today is, uh, as we can see there, an introduction to accessing and using data from uh, the ESS. Uh, and just to give you a quick guide as to, to the contents, I'm going to give a quick introduction to the ESS, just so you've got some background on how it works and what its purpose is. Many of you will know this already, but it's a useful background. I'm also going to provide some very quick basic examples of how the data are used, really just to demonstrate how the data can actually be used. Uh, but I'm going to spend most of the time actually talking about how to access the data. Um, and I'm going to do that in two ways. And the main way I'm going to do it is to demonstrate the Nestar online analysis tool, which is operated by the Norwegian Data Archive who uh, are basically the curators of the ESS data uh, based uh, in Norway. Uh, I'll also at the end show you how you can actually download the data sets yourselves so you can actually undertake your own analysis. Okay, so just to start with uh, an introduction to the ESS, um, it's been running really since the, the, the turn of the century. The, the funding was first provided uh, back in 2001 um, and the first fieldwork wave was undertaken shortly after in 2002. Uh, it won something called the Descartes Prize for Research in 2005 and really what that is, that the Descartes Prize is a, is a prize which is administered through the European Union and it's to reward outstanding achievement uh, in, in sciences uh, basically for collaborative research projects across uh, the, across Europe and the ESS was uh, awarded that, it was uh, the, the research uh, aspect of the prize. It was the first social sciences survey to, to be awarded that prize. So really, um, I, I mentioned that just to demonstrate that this is a, a really well-regarded uh, and well-run uh, in institution. In 2013, uh, it became something called an ERIC, which is a European Research Infrastructure Consortium. Essentially, what that means is that the ESS is, has its own legal entity. Uh, it just means it's more secure uh, and the funding uh, is secure for the next uh, two or three years uh, at any one given time. So the background, it's, it is a cross-national survey uh, and it is primarily and almost entirely focused at measuring attitudes. So what it seeks to do is, is to look at how do attitudes vary uh, across time and across different countries, so those countries being uh, European countries. And it's academically driven. I'll, I'll show you how uh, the, the, the questionnaire is devised or the, the process through which that happens in a moment. But basically it is, is driven by uh, specialists, academics, in, with particular research interests, so survey methodologists and subject survey uh, subject experts uh, in, a, in a range of different fields. And it's run by Enli, so that's every two years. So the first round was in 2002. Uh, later this year, 2018, uh, the ninth round will take place uh, across a number of countries. So we've got eight rounds of data completed so far, and that covers a total of 36 countries. More on that in a moment. And you can see there uh, 370,000 interviews, uh, and all the data are freely available for non-commercial use. So you just have to undergo a very short registration process at the NSD, which is the Norwegian Data Archive. You can then access the data uh, to your heart's content, provided, of course, it's for non-commercial purposes. So to date, in excess of 100,000 people have done that uh, worldwide, many of them uh, students, many of them academics, also people in government uh, and um, NGOs. And there's been in excess of 3,000 publications uh, which have used ESS data. Methodology is really important. It's based on uh, random probability sampling. Now, this isn't a sampling course, but uh, random probability sampling, as many of you will know, is essentially the 
most robust method for pro producing a sample that represents the population in which you're interested in. The field work is conducted face to face by interviewers last approximately an hour but that does vary of course from country to country because they're translated into different languages. Most countries use computer assisted interviewing, in fact from later this year that will be mandatory uh, for ESS participating countries. And the questionnaires are translated for what's called functional equivalence. Uh, so what that means is obviously that a prime purpose of the survey is to undertake cross-national research. So you want a questionnaire which means the same in every single country in which it's being fielded. So that's functional equivalence rather than literal equivalence. Uh, so what happens is that the quest source questionnaire is written in English, then local experts, often the national coordinators, organise translating that questionnaire so that it has as far as possible the exact same meaning as the English original. As you might imagine, there's a very strong focus on standardization of procedures. So the sampling procedure is, is, must be random probability. Lots of interviewer instruction and training so to standardize their approach in terms of asking questions exactly as they appear in the questionnaire uh, and not par paraphrasing or not interpreting the questions, for example, for respondents. Uh, and, and that's to ensure that when analysts are using the data, they can be confident that the the, the, as far as possible, the questions have been uh, fielded in exactly the same way uh, across all the different countries. ESS countries seek to maximize response, so to get the highest response rates uh, for, the, for the survey. And then the data are aggregated, uh, once fieldwork is complete, uh, in a completely consistent format. And that's obviously crucial for analysts who want to undertake cross-national research. So you can be confident that the variables are in exactly the same format for every single country. So just to outline the, the countries that participate, the map on the screen there shows all the different countries that have participated. I'm not going to go into detail here, but what you can see is the sort of light yellow bar uh, countries uh, are the ones that have uh, participated in all eight rounds, United Kingdom among uh, many countries there. Uh, so for those countries, we have data for every single round uh, since the ESS started in 2002. Now, in terms of the questionnaire, I said I'd say a little bit more about this. The way it operates is that there are kind of two parts of the questionnaire. So on the left-hand side of the screen there, you can see the core topics, so crime, democracy and politics, etc. Questions on those subjects are fielded in every single round of the ESS. So that means that you can look at a variable, a question, it will have been fielded since the beginning, usually, of the survey. So you can get time series analysis uh, from back as far as 2002. That takes up about half of the questionnaire. And then in addition, each round will have usually two, but not, not always, of what we call rotating modules. And again, I'm not going to go through all of these uh, in detail, but essentially they focus on one particular topic uh, and go into much more detail. So you might have, uh, say, 40 or 50 questions on one particular topic. And what's more, some of those modules are actually repeated over time. So to take an example, in round one, 2002, there was a module on immigration. In round uh, seven, that module, uh, for the most part, was repeated again. So what that means is you've got a detailed set of questions. You can compare the data cross-nationally, across all the European countries. And in addition for that particular model, you can also do some really detailed time series analysis. So comparing how things have changed in different countries over time. So I said I'd give some examples uh, as to how ESS data are actually used. And this isn't uh, to, to sort of talk in detail about what the data actually show. It's really just to highlight the sorts of analysis that ESS data enables us to undertake. Now, these are both examples that uh, NatSend, the organization I work for, uh, has produced. Uh, so this first one uh, is, uh, actually looks at the most recent round of data, the round eight data. Uh, and that was a, a set of questions uh, on climate change, so people's attitudes to climate change, etc. And this particular piece of analysis focused primarily on, well, entirely on those questions, but just on uh, looking at cross-national. So we had a number of different countries uh, participating in round eight. That module of questions, there wasn't really any time series that can be done because they hadn't been fielded in that way before, but a really detailed picture of how attitudes to climate change, for example, climate change scepticism, uh, compares to across different European countries. And that's 
one of the fundamental objectives of the ESS to see how attitudes change uh, across European countries. And what we could see there is there were some big differences between the countries. We could also look within the countries and we could see that attitudes, as you might expect, varied by age and also by educational attainment. But actually, those relationships were different. So they were different in the UK compared to some of the other European countries. So that's one example of how the data can be used. Another example, uh, ESS data, again, again, this was something conducted by, uh, produced by Nat Sen. Uh, this was attitudes to racism, and this drew on a number of different data sources, including our own panel on the British Social Attitude Survey. But this used ESS data on, um, from round seven, and some really uh, interesting questions on biological racism. So, for example, and this just focused entirely on the UK, we didn't look at countries across Europe, but we were very much interested in the UK, which is why we also use um, British Social Attitudes data. And we found that nearly a fifth of people actually in the UK agreed with the statement that some races or ethnic groups are born less intelligent. Obviously quite a, a, a key finding there to just demonstrate the, the extent of uh, racial prejudice in, in Britain, uh, and that used ESS data. So that's an example of just using one particular country and using one of the uh, detailed modules really looking uh, in depth that one particular topic uh, in one particular country. So those are just two examples that just highlight, highlight how the data uh, can actually be used. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to uh, show you how you can use the data uh, yourself. And as I said, I'm going to do that in two different ways. Uh, firstly, I'm going to use an online analysis tool. Uh, this is run by NSD, which is the, uh, the curators of the data, the ESS data, based in Norway. Uh, and we're going to go to their website and uh, look at how we can actually undertake some, some relatively quick, easy, uh, and basic analysis uh, using, using that tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go uh, online, and I'm going to go to uh, their website, uh, and the website that you we're going to go to is, is up here at the top, www.europeansocialsurvey.org. And if you were to type that in, uh, you would go straight to the European Social Survey Data Archive uh, hosted uh, by NSD in Norway. And you can see there are a range of, of options on the screen that you can use there. What we're going to do, uh, first of all, is we're going to go to the online analysis tool. So I'm going to the menu here, uh, data and documentation, and then I'm just going to scroll down to online analysis, and I'm going to click on that, and that will take us to this new screen, uh, which is uh, the Nestar, which is the, uh, the, 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 the tool for actually undertaking the analysis. It's the Nestar website um, hosted uh, in, in Norway. And what you're faced with here is, is a, uh, a screen uh, with the variables down here on the left-hand side. And uh, I'll just explain how these are structured. So what you can see uh, is each round uh, here. So that's ESS round one, round two, round three. And this basically operates just like Windows Explorer. So uh, it's a kind of hierarchical uh, structured set of, of variables. So I'm going to click on, on round seven. And you can see when I do that, that opens up uh, to uh, sort of submenus, and within that variable description, if I click on that, there's a little plus sign, it opens up all the various different sets of modules. So these are modules of questions, and I'm going to show you how to use those uh, in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, produce a quick table, uh, and uh, what we're going to say is, let's say we're interested in finding out uh, people's interest in politics and how that compares across the European countries. So we're going to click on tabulation. Uh, up here towards the top, and when I do that, what you can see is that uh, it's opened up a blank table, and you can see uh, that it's going to have the, uh, the the top break across there and the side break uh, down down the side here. So we're interested in how do attitudes to politics uh, compare across countries. Now I happen to know that that particular variable is in the politics section here, so I'm just going to click on the little uh, uh, plus sign there. And that will open up all the different variables that these are all the different questions, individual questions that are included within that module on uh, politics. And the top one there is the one I'm interested in today, how interested in politics. So I'm just going to left click on that and a little box will appear up, add to row, add to column, add as filter or add as measure like to do is I'm going to add that uh, as a row variable. It's going to appear in this part of the table, so I'm going to see a frequency of attitudes to, uh, sorry, interest in politics 
down the side. So I'm going to click on that uh, very briefly. It's going to ask for my login, which I'm just going to uh, type in here. So when you want to use this, uh, you will have to uh, go through a very short uh, registration process. Just to type my email address correctly. And uh, straight away, there we have uh, our frequency. So what we can see here at the moment uh, is that we've got the frequency very interested. We can see 12% of people very interested in politics going down to 18% uh, not at all interested. That's the picture across the whole of Europe. What I really want to do is I want to see how does that compare by country. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add country as a variable across the top here so I can see the responses broken down by different country. As you might expect, the country variable is in here in that country section. So I'm just going to open that up. There's only one variable in there. Again, I'm going to left click on that. I get the same little dialog box opening up there. This time, I'm going to add it to column. So I click on that and it turns away and here's our table. So we now can see uh, how the responses to that question, interest in politics, vary across the European, uh, the, the, all the European countries that participated in that particular uh, round in round seven. However, one thing I still need to do is I need to weight the data. So this at the moment is an unweighted uh, table uh, and I really need to weight it. So uh, how do I do that? I'm actually going to uh, use uh, a little icon uh, that I can't actually see here. So There we go. So there's a little icon with some scales on that you can see here. Uh, when I hover over that, the, the word weight appears uh, and I'm going to click uh, on that and I'm going to add the weight. Okay, now what I'm going to do, you can see this opens up a, a little dialog box, uh, which I'm just going to go quickly back to my presentation because uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit uh, about weighting data. So I'm just going to quickly move through these screens here uh, that I've just shown you. So. Uh, weighting the, the data. Now this uh, is not a statistics course, so I'm not going to go into detail about how weighting actually operates, but as many of you will know, for various reasons, uh, for example, certain types of people being more or less likely to participate in surveys, the raw unweighted survey data may not reflect the profile of the population that we're seeking to represent. Now, on ESS, there are three different types of weight. Uh, and I'm just going to briefly describe each of those to you now so that you will know exactly which weights to use uh, when, when you are undertaking analysis. So the first one is what's called the design weight. Uh, and all this is, is reflecting and correcting for the fact that some people have a higher chance of being selected to take part in the survey uh, than others. So as a random probability survey, we select addresses, we send our interviewers to those addresses, and if there's more than one person at that address, uh, the interviewer has to make a random choice. Now what that means is that people in single person households will automatically get chosen. People in households where there are more than one person have a lower chance of being selected. The design weight simply corrects for that. So it means that everyone has an equal chance of being selected, uh, which is a fundamental aspect of probability sampling. Now, don't worry too much about if you don't follow that. Um, uh, I'll explain how to use them in a moment. The next component is the post-stratification weight, uh, and that includes the design weight. And what the post-stratification weight does is it essentially forces the sample to be representative of the population we're interested in. And on ESS, it does this in terms of the age, the sex, the region, and it also, to, in some countries, education attainment. Now, for example, most surveys tend to underrepresent younger people. Younger people are just less likely to take part in surveys. So what the post-stratification weight does is it corrects for that. It just weights up the proportion of, of uh, younger people so that the overall sample is reflective of the general population. Now, the post-stratification weight also includes the design weight, okay? So these two weights are essentially combined in the post-stratification weight. And then the final one is the population size weight. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, there are obviously very large differences in population size between European countries. So, for example, Germany has a population of 82 million. 
Belgium has a population of just 11 million, but on ESS we'll probably have similar numbers of participants in each of those countries. Now if we were to just add them together without correcting for that, what that means is that the Belgian respondents would kind of have an equal share uh, compared to the German respondents. But what we need to do is correct for that so that the German respondents are reflective of the relative population size, so they will have a much higher weight uh, using the population size weight. Okay, so, so which weight should you use? So basically to summarize what I've just said, in most cases you will be using either one of two weights. So you'll either use, be using the post stratification weight, which of course includes the design weight, or the, 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 also you'll be using the population weight. So when you're looking at a country on its own, so we're just interested, for example, in the UK, we only need to use the post-stratification weight. But if we're also looking at two or more countries uh, at the same time, we also, in addition to that, need to use the population weight. Okay? And that last bit, the population weight, all that does, as I said, is it just gives the, the right proportion to each individual country when you're adding them together. Okay, so what I'm going to go back and do now is show you how to do that. So I've gone back now to our live Nestar analysis. Uh, I remember, if you remember, I clicked on the little scales icon um, and that brought up this little dialog box here. Uh, and in there you can see the various different components of the weight. Now remember what we're doing here is we are looking across all the different European countries. Okay, and so we are going to use both the post stratification weight and also the population correction weight. So I'm going to click on the post stratification weight here uh, and I'm going to select it there. I'm then going to click on this little arrow and you will see that that then, then deposits it in this box here, weighting variables selected. In addition to that, I also want the population size weight. Okay, and I'm going to click again on that arrow there and it then moves that into the weighting variables selected. So I've selected these two variables, I then simply have to click on OK and that will apply the weight to the table. Now, just whilst we're here, you can see down the bottom a part of the screen here, weighting information, there is a little bit more information on what I've just said. So that summarizes or goes into a little bit more detail uh, about how the different weights are calculated and what their purpose is, just in case uh, you need a refresher. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK. And after a short delay, I now have a weighted table. And, and how can I tell that the table is weighted? Well, two things. Mainly, the little scales icon is highlighted down here, and you can see it says weight is on. But also, if I just draw your attention, I can now see some of the bigger population countries, for example, the United Kingdom. You can see that N, as in the total sample size at the bottom, is quite large. 5,300 for the UK, uh, Germany, uh, which is over here, 7,000 at the bottom here. So if I do our comparison, we compare Germany, uh, 7,000 to Belgium, which is just under 1,000. You can see that Germany is about seven or eight times as, as big uh, in this population weighted data set uh, than Belgium. And that's just the being uh, implemented by that population weight. If we took that population weight off, uh, we would see these samples come back to fairly similar uh, across the, the different European countries. So essentially what we've just done in a few minutes is we've just produced our table uh, and we can see here how uh, attitude or interest in politics varies across the European countries. So we can see 16% uh, of the UK population uh, is very interested in politics. That compares with just 10% uh, in Belgium and just 3% in the Czech Republic. Okay, and we can actually scroll across uh, over to the far side here and there is actually a, a total uh, um, column at the end there where you can see uh, the overall interest in politics. So that's that's how we've uh, produced a, a simple table and you can produce any number of tables uh, using exactly uh, the same approach. Of course you can, you don't have to do it by country, you can break down uh, uh, answers to one question by another using exactly the same process that I've just done. So we could have interest in politics cross-analyzed by um, something different. So for example, trust in the country's parliament, we could add that uh, instead of country uh, if we were particularly interested. Just to uh, show you one more aspect of this uh, analysis tool, uh, which is uh, 
the subset command, uh, we may be interested not only how uh, attitudes, uh, interest in politics varies across country, but we may want to look at just younger people. So we may want to look at a, uh, a subset uh, of our respondents. And we're going to do that using this little icon here. Um, so if you can see subset appears, I'm going to click on that. Uh, and then a dialog box um, comes up. Um, and so what I now need to do is I now need to select a, a variable to essentially filter uh, this data. Uh, uh, I want to look at age. Uh, so again, I need to find age uh, in the list of variables down the left hand side here. Now I happen to know that uh, the age variable is in this block here, gender, year of birth and household grid. So again, I click on that uh, little uh, cross there and it opens up all the individual variables uh, in there and I can see there this age of respondent is in there. So again, if I click on there, this time I get the option to add it to subset because oh, I've clicked the subset command, so I'm going to click add to subset. And then you can see uh, over in the dialog box over here, age of respondent has appeared. Now we said we wanted to look at just younger people. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter it on everyone uh, who's under the age of uh, 36, so um, up to 35. Uh, so I type 36 in here and I uh, add that into the value there and you can see this box here has a, uh, a number of logical operators uh, which I can select uh, just by this uh, drop down arrow here and you can see them all appear so we can do greater than, less than, less than or equal to etc. Now I've chosen 36 so I'm going to choose less than 36 so that gives me up to 35. Uh, so we have age of respondent is less than 36 and I'm going to click on OK. And then after a short delay, I now get an, a, a table which is filtered. And you can now see that the filter is on and the weight is on. And just to, to show you that there, if you remember when we were looking at the United Kingdom earlier, I think it was 15.5% of people were very interested. Among the younger people, that's dropped down to 9%. And you can also see here that less people are actually in the table. So we've got 1,700 as opposed to the 5,000 or so uh, that we had for the whole population. So I've there now shown you uh, the way of undertaking pretty much all the sorts of analyses or basic uh, cross-tabulation analysis that you, that you might want to do. Um, now, you might want to um, chart or produce your, um, some uh, tables yourself. Um, there are a number of options at the top here. I'm not going to go into these in any detail, but there are some charting uh, and tabulation uh, uh, icons up there but what you can also do is you can also actually export uh, the data to a spreadsheet and you do that using that little icon there okay and if you were to click on that uh, you would just get uh, an option there uh, of where you would like to actually open uh, an Excel sheet so I'm not going to do that now but you can see there if I were to click on open this would take me to Excel in fact I might just try and do that see if you can see that uh, so it's opening Excel and there I have my table exactly as it showed on screen in Excel. I can now produce charts uh, or I can copy that into a, a report uh, in, and take that uh, in, in any format um, that I want to moving on from there. Okay, uh, so, so that is basically the, the online analysis tool. Um, the only thing I'm going to show you now is the other way of actually getting at the data is to actually download the data uh, yourselves. Uh, you may want to do that now as you've seen the analysis I've done here, um, very quick, very easy, um, great for doing quick bits of analysis. If you want to do something more substantial and you actually want to be able to run it and rerun it, you may prefer to actually be able to uh, download the data in SPSS or Stata format uh, and, and undertake the analysis yourself. Of course you can then write syntax which you can save uh, and you can repeat the analysis, you can change it uh, much more easily. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do, just, just going to show you briefly um, how you do that. I'm not going to show you any uh, actual analysis, but we go back to europeansocialsurvey.org. Uh, that takes us back to that uh, screen that I showed you a short time ago. Again, we're going to click on data and documentation. Uh, at this time, uh, rather than going to online analysis, we're going to go to cumulative data wizard. Uh, and that is the, the uh, system for actually producing your own bespoke data set. So here you can see uh, that this is the process for doing this. Essentially what you can do is you can choose which years you're interested in, which countries you're interested in, and which modules of questions you're interested in. 
So you can just ask for everything, but that would be a very big data set. So rather than doing that, uh, you may just want to suit, choose the ones you're interested in. Let's say I was doing a bit more analysis on the politics questions in ESS. So I might want to choose the politics module. Uh, so I click in that box there. I'm also going to want to uh, look at some of the socio-demographic variables, for example, age. So I'm going to click on that box there. And over here, I choose which rounds or which countries I'm interested in. Now, if I was only interested in, in one country, say it was um, the United Kingdom, I might just click uh, on that country there. That would give me all the uh, rounds of data for the UK. I could just click on the latest. I could just only want um, one uh, year, the, the latest round. Uh, or I may want to look at all countries uh, for round seven and all countries for round one, for example. And you can see how that operates. So essentially, I'm just clicking which years, which quest countries, uh, and which uh, question modules I'm interested in. Now, I'm not going to do this because it will then try, try and start producing a big um, SPSS data set for me. Uh, so I'm not going to do that now. What you may find is that in order to do this, you do need to sign in again here uh, to, to the data wizard to do that. But as I said, I'm not going to do that. But that is how you produce your own uh, bespoke data set that you can then uh, save on your own uh, networks. It's obviously completely anonymized, so you can do that uh, as much as you want. Now, finally, just before uh, we finish, uh, I'm just going to briefly show you uh, the how to access the documentation uh, that you might want to use. Now, obviously, uh, I've picked on variables here that I happen to know because uh, I've looked at them before, but you, you might not be so familiar with the data set. Uh, the data archive has an excellent uh, system for, for documenting uh, all the different questionnaires, etc. Um, so you can see data and documentation again. It's in here by country, by theme, by year. I'm just going to click uh, by year. Uh, and uh, there's all sorts of things. So you can get the data, an integrated file this way if you want. Uh, you can get the source questionnaire here in PDF format. Um, so you can quickly click on that. I'm actually going to go into an individual round uh, and show you uh, the more uh, extensive uh, documentation that there is. So this is round seven. So here's all the files that you can get, all the different data files. Uh, the main file is the, uh, is the integrated file there. And then there's all the documentation here, fieldwork documents. So there's the main questionnaire. You can see the show cards that the interviewers used. You can use the project instructions that the uh, interviewers were given. So if you want to know any particular assistance that was provided or guidance that was provided to interviewers when asking an individual question, you might find it in there. The other thing that I think data analysts will find really valuable is what's called the data protocol. So this can almost be used instead of the questionnaire. So if you know there was a question, for example, on interest in politics, you open up the data protocol. And what that essentially is, is a listing of all the variables, exactly how they're structured and crucially what the variable name is, where they appeared. Uh, so you can quickly find them when you want to do that online analysis. So there's a whole uh, uh, raft of other documentation which is available and might be useful for users uh, when doing uh, detailed data analysis. Okay, and then just finally, uh, just uh, for more help that you might want when using uh, this uh, facility, uh, I'm just going to go back to the online analysis um, and let's quickly recreate. It's a nice way of doing a reprise. Um, so let's just say we want to recreate that table very quickly. So we chose the, uh, the year over here. Uh, we chose tabulation. We chose variable description. We opened that up. We knew that we were looking for the question on interest in politics. So we opened up that set. We found our inter how interested in politics question. Uh, we added it to a row. We then uh, found the country variable. We added that to our column. And finally, we weighted the data uh, by choosing the post stratification weight and the population size correction weight. And we produced that. So there's our table. Uh, and what I did want to show you, again, this isn't quite on my screen, but over on the right-hand side, uh, there is actually a little question uh, icon, uh, which you can click on. Uh, I can, sorry, so I can show you that. No, so I have actually got a, a picture of that. Um, if we quickly go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, so let's quickly just move through here. Um, 
no, it's not on there. Uh, here we go, over here. So the little icon, the question mark icon over on the right-hand side, if you click on that, that will take you to the Nestar uh, manual and lots of information about how to actually uh, undertake analysis using Nestar. Nestar. Okay, I've shown you the, uh, uh, the output to Excel. So that's the help icon uh, and that's the online guidance and contact details for uh, NSD in Norway. Um, and you can actually, uh, should you wish to, if you have a complicated query, uh, um, contact them directly. So I've shown you basic tabulation. There is actually the facility in there uh, to do more detailed analysis, for example, correlations and regressions. That, that There is a facility to do that. I would suspect that most people who want to do that level of analysis would probably wish to download the data set and do that themselves uh, in SPSS or, uh, or Stata. So I, I'm not going to, to demonstrate that uh, at all today. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And thank you very much to Adam for this uh, very informative presentation. And goodbye.